Hi everyone, in uh, this series of video, I wanted to teach uh, a skill that I find uh, very hard to grasp for a beginner um, in programming because you usually come with practice. Um, so the, the skill I'm talking about is solving programming problems with problems being like very uh, general, they can be like many type of problems. What, what I saw was that there's a lot of beginners and people that have been studying like uh, programming for a while that have kind of difficulty um, solving actual problem. Like when they go and they see a tutorial, it's kind of not too bad. They're able to follow along and maybe be, get a bit creative. But if they're uh, given a programming task, let's say uh, lead code or hacker rank thing, or they're trying to come up with a, a project, um, they just blank out. And I saw that when I was um, uh, tutoring um, computer science at in, in university um, it's not just like the first freshman the, the first year guys I was also like uh, um, people at the end that had trouble with this and one thing I was teaching them also was that uh, it was was this technique uh, to solve programming problem more than solving a particular programming problem every time I tried to solve it for them it didn't do anything that's when I was teaching them this skill that actually helped and it's actually not that uh, difficult um, to, uh, to, to teach. It just require, um, it's just not that flashy and not that, uh, 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 actually not that interesting to, to see in action. I also do have quite a lot of people asking like random program problems. Um, and it's act actually very easy to solve and usually they are solved, they, they were able to kind of know where the solution was. Uh, but they don't know the movement in order to go to the solution. Um, yeah. Um, another, another thing here is uh, why this um, this skills is not uh, very uh, understood by beginner is the nature of how the tutorial for beginners are, are set up. Uh, you will usually not see the teacher struggle to solve a program problem. Um, usually, what happened is that they already coded the stuff. Um, and then even if they're typing in a tutorial, they will be coding what they already are seeing in the next screen. And I'm, I'm also do it myself because it's not fun to watch like a, an hour um, tutorial of someone struggling uh, when you can condense it into 10 minutes when you have the, the actual thing already sorted. Um, and because of the nature of this, you will not see that process. And I think this process is key so that people don't need to uh, to kind of copy paste code and stuff like that uh, but actually understand what the hell is going on and they are able to come to a solution themselves um yeah so that's set up for tutorials like they they remove a core part of the problem solving i find uh, which is usually very messy like it's not straightforward but when you look at teacher doing the stuff uh, online or even in your uh, university class it look like it's super clean and they kind of like go like this and <laughs> they, they kind of solve it like a mentat in, in Dune. Uh, but actually what happened is that they already know the solution, they already thought about it, coded it, and struggled, and then they, they came up uh, with this stuff. So in this series, I will, I will show you, um, I will show you the real process, like the real ugly process of solving programming um, problem, um, different kind, and I'm gonna narrate what the hell is going to my mind when I'm, I'm, I'm doing them. Uh, this video will most likely be a bit long, longer than usual tutorial video. And if you want to watch that at uh, higher speed, feel free. But I think the, the important stuff is not the actual problem I'm solving, but actually the process of going to a solution. And you will see I'm going, I'm going to be going to dead end and then refactoring my stuff. Um, I'll also show you like the actual simple framework to do that, which kind of everybody is, um, that is good at solving problem is using this. Um, and it's very simple. It's not a complicated, like multi-step problem. It's like three steps. Um, and it's, uh, uh, it's really straightforward, um, but you don't see it often. Um, so my hope here is that um, newcomer that kind of have, uh, like the, they've wa you've watched tutorials and stuff, and then you see a primary problem and you're like, I have no idea what to do. Go see the video, these videos, like a few of them. Uh, maybe there will be one that match your problem and then see how I'm going to 
through the stuff and how I'm struggling and uh, going through the step in order to get to an actual solution. Um, and yeah, that will maybe help you out a bit uh, going out of this blank space. Hey, I don't, also don't hesitate to comment for each problem if like I messed up something or something is unclear. Hey, it will be very messy. The actual framework, what is it? It's like three step and it's, uh, it's pretty simple. I've used it, by the way, this framework for like um, simple homework at university for um, like lead code type of problem and for research grade problem also that don't have a defined solution. Um, like this thing work, like a, a even problem where there's no one that can help you, you're technically the, the most uh, knowledgeable person about this, it still work. So the, 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 the first step, um, it's where you're gonna spend like 90% of your time is just understand the problem you're solving. Um, and this is usually where people fail, is like they don't really understand what they are solving uh, at all. Um, so what I mean is that they don't understand the problem set statement, they don't understand why they're doing this stuff, they don't understand like the end goal and what, what, where to, what's the question, even if it's a research question. Um, they don't really understand where they're going um, and that's, that's problematic. So let's wind back and let's say a, a very simple programming problem you read the whole thing, right? And understand every aspect of it and then put it into your own word and understand what you need to come up with. And if there's something in this that you don't understand, don't solve it, just figure it out. Ask your teacher if it's a some software problem. Like ask people around like Google stuff and then find every term that you don't understand, every mathematical formula that you don't understand there, understand it. Um, because if you s you know all of the the the, the ingredient and subtlety, you'll be able to get to a solution easier. And just um, disclaimer for like uh, homework uh, at uh, even at like a graduate uh, uh, undergraduate level, um, sometimes there's ambiguity, right? And this ambiguity can like mess you up. And if you don't understand that there's ambiguity, you will like maybe go into a direction that the people grading you will um, will not have taught and then you're gonna get slashed off your remarks. Um, so if you understand the problem very well though, you're gonna be able to show this ambiguity and get your point back. And I've done that repeatedly uh, in my undergraduate, undergraduate uh, uh, curriculum and uh, I will not have had the grade I had if I didn't do that. Um, so. Remember, this is a creative kind of process and there's multiple solutions, usually there's not only one. So if you if there's ambiguity in the problem, you have to surface it and then you, if you have time to do that, you just go see the teacher, whoever is gonna be grading you at the end and ask like, hey, I thought about this way, what do you think? Like, is this what you're saying? And if they actually, like they didn't think that, they will be able to tell you and give you more information and you put that into your problem set. Just a quote, like always, Tell yourself that when you go and solve a problem. It's from Einstein, he said, if I had an hour to solve a problem, I'd spend, I'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem, five minutes thinking about the solution. And this is actually very, very, very important. Think about the problem and understand it well, because if you understand the problem, the two next step are kind of seamless. So second step, right? So here, don't touch the keyboard, like don't code. It, like even if you understand the problem well, don't code it, right? Why I'm saying this to all my students um, when I was tutoring was, if you touch the keyboard, you're going from like a, a multi-dimensional space in your head, right? You can think about many things and they can have colors and then they can have shapes and they can interact to a place where it's text and it's 2D, right? So you're limiting yourself and how you can express your thought. And that's problematic if you don't know exactly the solution. And this is what I was saying earlier with the tutorial. The tutorial that people are doing, they're not, they didn't have think about it like top down, right? The, the software, the problems that you're solving are not like um, linear in this sense. Like they, they have module that interact in different way and they have shape and they, they are in within a space of, uh, 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 of structure that is solving the problem. Um, 
I, 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 I kind of look uh, a bit dumb like seeing it this way but that, that's exact, exactly true this is why you will see people that are very good at programming they kind of have like a notepad next to it next to them and they're drawing the solution because they're mapping what the hell this thing gonna look like and this goes for any any type of software even like webs, website a website is not a flat thing right it, there's module and it, it, there's a structure to it so it's special in nature. So if you go straight to the keyboard without having a solution, you're limiting yourself to a, to a 2D thing. Um, and it might get confusing because people that are very, very good, like super, super good that already saw a lot of these problems popping around, they will already know what the space look like. And then they can't jump straight to the keyboard because they solved it in the head um, because they know the structure, right? And then they're, they're placing the structure in space in this 2D space and then they're solving it here. So what I would say here is you have to solve the problem conceptually first, without any restriction. You draw the stuff out. Um, yeah, you just draw it out. Like uh, you say, like, this is my input. I understand it's cool like this. This is what I want to have the output. I will do it this way. And then you draw your boxes. Um, and if you don't know how to fix, like uh, do a box, like uh, how to actually code it, don't matter. You make a black box with the input and the output that you need and then you leave it there for, for then and then you see so you set up the rest of your structure and then you iteratively drill down each of these boxes until you understand what each of these boxes need to be doing and sometimes a box that is a black box for you means that you don't know this particular data structure tech or how to do that that specific section so then you, you kind of try to figure out this sub problem. And this is what will happen when you draw it up properly is you'll be chunking this down into sub problem that you just need to solve. And once you, they are solved um, and you know the flow and you know every component of them, then, then it's done. Like you're, you're good to go. You, you'll be able to, uh, uh, to go to the, to the last step, which is to code the stuff. Um, and then, yes, you will be in 2D, but you already have your plan, you know, which module you have. You already have the interface technically of the input and the output, and then you'll be able to code it easily and even refactor it as you go. Um, because as you are gonna code this stuff, you will be able to see, oh, these steps are actually one. These are like, I will break it down to three because it's easier, I'm gonna reuse that. Um, so there's a bit of a, of a feedback loop with the first, uh, the second step. Um, but if you already have a plan that work, Right? you'll be able to iterate. And sometimes the plan, right? let's say it's very brute force because you don't know how to optimize your stuff, but in the problem statement you need to, well, you will be able to see that. Like, uh, ah, well, uh, there's no way I can speed that up because like structurally this thing will be very inefficient. And then you'll be able to know that you need uh, another paradigm for this problem set in order to solve it. And this is where you can check out this paradigm. Um, so a lot of uh, hand waving uh, in there, but um, yeah, like uh, like I said, this thing is very hard to grasp, and usually it's, it's with practice. Um, but if you don't know that this is how it's done, uh, you're gonna have uh, you, you you will just not know uh, what to do. So that's it. In conclusion, I'll be posting some of the video under this playlist, so um, you'll see this framework in action. I'm gonna do easy stuff, like medium stuff, hard stuff like esoteric kind of stuff and you'll be able to see what uh, what uh, what this process look like and how to actually do that so i hope this is useful and i'll see you in the next uh, video